Hey everyone, today on The Modern Defender, I'm gonna show you how you can use a non-violent posture to help de-escalate a bad situation before it gets worse. Stick around. But before we do that, if you like the content here on The Modern Defender, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave me a comment. All right, so you've seen it, I've seen it. There are people out there today who are just really heated. Uh, COVID-19 has certainly got brought out the worst of most people. Um, whether you're in a supermarket or outside in a park or wherever you are, whether you're wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, there are people who are willing to say something to you because they disagree with what you are doing. Well, those are the folks that are quite dangerous these days because they're just so heated and so unreasonable about their anger. It doesn't matter what side you're on. The only violent encounter you are guaranteed to survive is the one that you avoid in the first place. Don't involve yourself in unnecessary conflicts with others. If someone has a problem with you, you want to create that verbal boundary. Hey, stay back. I don't know you. Don't touch me. Leave me alone and continue to walk away. There's no need to engage in any sort of verbal altercation with somebody. They could pull out a gun and shoot you. They could stab you. They could have another weapon on them, or they could just be bigger and tougher than you. You know, it doesn't matter how many years of training you have. Your best tool is your brain. Okay, and you want to be—you want to outsmart the person who's being aggressive. Okay, you want to save your tools, you want to save your empty-handed skills for a conflict you can't avoid, where they're just going to bring it to you. You can't walk away. You have no other choice but to defend yourself. That's when you use your tools. That's when you use your hands, and that's when you show them that you might not be tougher than them, but you're more dangerous than them. But we want to avoid that situation to begin with. That's why it's important that we keep our hands up, we have a strong posture, our eyes open, loudly say, hey, back away, leave me alone, somebody call 911. If those things don't work, then you may have somebody who's being quite aggressive to you, okay? Well, then that's a different situation. That's why what we're gonna do is we wanna use our nonviolent posture as a way to defend ourselves, okay? And we're gonna work on that on the bag in just a minute. Stick around. All right, so it's happening, whether you're at your supermarket or at the, at the hardware store, people are agitated and it's either you have a mask on or you don't have a mask on. I just watched an argument in a local supermarket uh, just the other day and people are heated, we're divided right now and I can only imagine it's gonna get worse. So we need to prepare ourselves for what may happen if someone brings that anger on us? Remember, we want to avoid a violent encounter in the first place, okay? So we're not gonna engage in that behavior. But we can't control what other people do, okay? So, you know, we talked about having a good verbal boundary. Um, a nonviolent posture is basically, instead of having my hands up this way, which kind of gives the image that I want to fight, I want to give the image that I just want to de-escalate. And keep in mind, what a nonviolent posture does is it actually helps influence the opinions of potential eyewitnesses. What, I'm, what I mean by that is if I'm trying to de-escalate, hey buddy, back away, I don't know you, and then I'm going to spring into action and defend myself, when the police show up and conduct their investigation, those potential eyewitnesses are going to say, hey listen, that guy was being super aggressive and the other guy was just trying to calm him down and say, hey, leave me alone back away. Now you may want to say, hey buddy, you know, get the bleep away from me or I'm going to kick your butt. Well, that, that's what I would want to say too, but that's not going to help me look like the innocent party, okay? When you use force to defend yourself, you're, you're certainly allowed to do that, but you've got to be an innocent party. And by using vulgar language or having your fists clenched, that's not going to help you, you know, be or appear to be the innocent party. So that's why a nonviolent posture in de-escalation techniques, creating a verbal boundary is so important. You're, you're, you're fighting the battle against the aggressor, but you're also fighting a battle to properly influence the opinions of those potential eyewitnesses that, hey, you are the innocent party, you are not the aggressor, and you're just defending yourself. Okay, that's important to remember. So let's get to the back now. So. We talk about getting off the line all the time. And whether you're in MMA, whether you're in you're, you're boxing, or you're doing any other activity, especially when it comes to uh, 
violent encounters, getting off the line is so important. It is your basic, it's your fundamental thing, okay? So the bad guy is coming straight at me. We're gonna use this bag today. When I make first contact with this bag, it's not with the body of the aggressor. When I make first contact with this bag, it's gonna be with the offending limb. So if they're coming at me with their finger, or they're going to grab me, or they're going to punch me, in most cases, which I've witnessed, is when there's an argument uh, regarding masks, whether you're wearing one or not wearing one, the person who's being aggressive is in your face with their finger. Well, I have to tell you, once somebody gets inside of your reactionary gap, once they've closed that distance between, okay, they can't hit me, and now they can hit me and there's not a lot I can do about it, that's when it becomes assault. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we got our hands on guard, we're creating a visual and a verbal boundary so that way, if that offending limb, this bag is the offending limb, so that hand is coming at me, right along that line, I wanna step off the line, whichever way I wanna go, and redirect that strike. What redirecting that strike does is it gets me on the outside of their body so that I can either A, create distance, or B, throw some shots. Now, what do I mean by throw some shots? Well. You've got to know what is in your toolbox. What is in your self-defense toolbox as far as your empty handed skills go? If you don't have a lot of them, you may just want to redirect and create distance and continue to issue commands. Stay away from me, I don't know you. Somebody call 911. All of these things are gonna fit into your um, defensive actions, okay? So your defensive actions are gonna be, if you're not that skilled, hey, Stay back, I don't know you, somebody call 911. That's perfect, that's great. If you do have some tools that you've practiced, remember practice is key, you, you can't apply these things in a self-defense environment unless you're practicing. So maybe you can kick. So I get to the outside and throw a hard kick to the groin, to the lower body. And if I do that, maybe I can still create distance. Um, if you are going to throw a kick to the lower legs or the body, the groin, you know, it depends what your footwear is. So if you're going to practice these techniques, maybe you're going to want to practice these techniques um, with the shoes and the clothing that you would wear when you do go to the supermarket or the store or in your parking lot, okay? I have boots on today and I'm going to tell you, if I had these boots on and I needed to get to the outside, I would throw a toe kick a hard toe kick to, to the body, to the knee, to the groin, okay? Use your shoes as weapons, okay? If you only have sneakers on, then you may want to go with more of an in-step strike. But regardless of what you decide to do to defend yourself, everything that you do needs to be used as a weapon. Yes, your nonviolent posture is a weapon. Remember, what did I say in the beginning of this video? The only violent encounter that you are guaranteed to survive is the one that you avoid in the first place. A nonviolent posture gives you the ability to react to what they're doing Stay back. I don't know you. Whoa, whoa, in that self-defense environment. Stay away. Stay away from and one more thing I'd like to say about how some of these arguments that can boil over into violent encounters may transpire and what to do if you witness one. Number one, don't get involved, okay? Third party encounters, when somebody steps in, to somebody else's debate or argument or fight, it's never good for them. So if you are gonna do that, make sure you are physically comfortable with your ability to defend yourself if need be, or comfortable with your verbal skills. Can you verbally de-escalate de the situation? And if you can't, and that aggressor now turns their attention on you, are you able to use that nonviolent posture, your skills, your tools, to end that threat, okay? Everyone has to make that decision. Are you gonna step in? If I you know, witnessed somebody being very aggressive to somebody who may have been not able-bodied or you know, somebody intimidating an old lady or somebody who just wasn't able to defend themselves, it would be hard for me not to step in or at least you know, say something from a distance. Hey, back away, I'm calling 911. Step away from her, you, know, you don't know her. Calm down, everybody. Um, but in a situation like that, 
you know, you've got to be comfortable and prepared uh, to deal with that aggressor if they turn their attention towards you. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Modern Defender. Please hit me up in the comments, like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Stay safe out there, everybody.